Using Gaia's star mapping data, researchers rewound the path of Interstellar Visitor 3, I Atlas, and Flag 3, suspected homes. Each one fits a different clue, gravity, youth, or sun-like architecture. Yet each leaves a nagging mismatch. We'll follow the trail, suspect by suspect, and see what the evidence really says about where 3i Atlas may have started its journey through the Milky Way. First up is the pair that keeps popping to the top of the backtracking lists. The ultra-wide binary G137-55 and G137-54. In Gaia DR3, they appear as two low-mass stars separated by an unusually large distance for a bound pair. That ultra wide setup matters because wide binaries create a slowly changing gravitational landscape. Over long time scales, that landscape can shuffle distant icy bodies, especially in the outer regions where orbits are only loosely tied to the star system. Here's the key idea. In a single star system, a small body mostly feels one stable gravitational center. In a wide binary, the effective center of gravity moves as the two stars orbit their shared barycenter. That motion can gently pump energy into long period orbits, nudging some bodies inward and others outward. If the system also hosts planets, the odds of ejection rise because planets provide repeated gravitational kicks that can lift an object onto an unbound path. To test whether 3i Atlas brushed past such a system, researchers integrate its orbit backward through a Milky Way gravity model. They do the same for enormous samples of Gaia stars then search for close approaches in space and time. Among encounters in the last few million years, the G137-5554 Barycenter stands out as one of the strongest candidates to have perturbed 3i Atlas's route. Think of it as a highlighted waypoint in the rewind, one of the few places where the math says this could matter, where the clue weakens, even a near miss of a few tenths of a parsec is still tens of thousands of astronomical units away that is far outside typical planet-scattering zones. The relative speed is also high, so the interaction window is short. On top of that, small measurement uncertainties grow when you rewind millions of years. So suspect number one is a great lead, but it does not provide a clean origin stamp. A decisive match would likely require a much closer passage, a slower relative approach, and supporting evidence of a planetesimal reservoir. With the current numbers, most teams treat this system as an intriguing nudge, not a confirmed source. Suspect number two is tempting for a different reason. It looks like a system that naturally stockpiles the raw ingredients for visitors. At Mike A and at Mike B form a nearby M dwarf binary that appears in Gaia based encounter searches. M dwarfs are the most common stars in the Milky Way, and many host compact planetary systems. Put two of them together, and you get a more complex gravitational setup that can stir surrounding debris over long time scales. At Mike is also famous for being young and active. Young stars rotate rapidly and shine brightly in high energy wavelengths, which often goes hand in hand with evolving disks and leftover rubble from planet formation. Observations discussed in the literature point to cold dust in the system, a clue that larger unseen populations of comet like bodies may exist. If you want a location that could supply an interstellar object, a debris-rich environment like this is naturally attractive. Now layer in the trajectory puzzle. When researchers integrate 3i Atlas backward through the galaxy, that Mike shows up as a possible close passerby in the last several million years. It is not the only candidate, but it's memorable because it combines a believable source environment with a concrete Gaia identity. It feels like the suspect with both opportunity and the right kind of stuff to send outward. The mismatch, the broader context doesn't line up. At Mike is often associated with the Beta Pictoris moving group, placing its age at only a few tens of millions of years. Meanwhile, 3i Atlas's kinematics look more consistent with an older disk wanderer than with a newly launched traveler. Its motion relative to the local galactic flow does not match that young group in a tight way. So at Mike stays on the list, but it sits closer to interesting possibility than best explanation. If future astrometry tightens the encounter distance and the inbound velocity begins to match at mixed motion more closely, the case would strengthen. Right now, 
The age and speed mismatch dominates. Even though the system's dusty, energetic character makes it hard to ignore. Suspect number three is less recognizable by name, but strong by concept. A G-type main sequence star classified around G3V, identified in Gaia DR3 as a past encounter candidate. Some like stars matter because we understand how efficiently they can clear and eject small bodies when giant planets are present. Our own solar system offers the blueprint. Massive planets reshape comet reservoirs, trade energy with passing objects, and can gradually push some of them onto trajectories that exceed the system's escape speed. That ejection pathway is important because it does not require one dramatic moment. A small body can experience many mild gravitational assists over time. Each pass adjusts its orbit until it finally becomes unbound. If 3i Atlas formed in a sun-like system with at least one large planet, an outward launch is physically straightforward. It's also statistically plausible, since sun-like stars are common and planetary systems appear widespread. So why is this particular G3V candidate considered? In Gaia-based rewinds, it shows up as one of the stars that could have passed relatively near 3i Atlas's reconstructed path. That places it on the worth-checking list. Its stellar type adds a second layer of plausibility. The mechanism exists in principle. The catch, the details refuse to lock in. The closest approach distance is still enormous compared with the size of a planetary system, and the relative speed is high enough that any interaction window would be brief. The rewind also becomes less unique the farther back you go. Small uncertainties in stellar motions and in the galactic gravity field expand into broad corridors of possible past paths. So the G3V suspect reads like a good idea without a tight, testable match in the encounter geometry. Still, it teaches a useful lesson. Some like star with planets may be the right category, even if this specific star is not the answer. In practice, the best clue may be population level, not address level. And that sets up our conclusion. Future Gaia releases, improved radial velocity measurements, and better modeling of the Milky Way's mass distribution could reshuffle the rankings. That's why researchers treat this suspect as a placeholder for a broader class of systems rather than a final destination. 3i Atlas may never point to one neat hometown, but it does point to a clear neighborhood. Kinematic studies place it most comfortably in the Milky Way's disk population, with many results leaning toward a thin disk-style orbit. That suggests it began around ordinary stars that circle the galaxy, much like our Sun. Over immense time, tiny gravitational nudges from stars, clouds, and the galaxy's overall pull can blur any single trail. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.